Bueno, obviamente es un, un tiempo difícil para todo el mundo ahorita, pero estoy muy feliz de que ya se están comenzando a normalizar todas las cosas, todo el mundo y pues me siento con mucha energía y, y pues mucha ansiedad para comenzar a pelear a este peso porque me siento más saludable y más fuerte. Tienes una pelea complicada originalmente contra Antonina, pero ahora una pelea mejor en todos los aspectos, ¿no? Pelea estelar, la número uno del ranking, que, que es Jessica Ay. ¿Qué te puede dar una victoria ante Jessica en esta primera pelea en las 125 libras? Bueno, esta pelea se va a significar bien, algo muy grande para mí. La pelea más grande de mi carrera. Um, yo creo que sí, cuando le gane a Jessica Ay este sábado me van a poner allí pues, junto a los nombres que van a estar cerca a pelear el título. Ojalá el top five. Una última pregunta de mi parte, Cintia. ¿Quién va a estar en tu esquina este fin de semana? Nuevo equipo, pero obviamente varias restricciones. ¿Quién te va a acompañar en la esquina este fin de semana? Um, este sábado me va a acompañar mi coach, Ron Kessler, y otros de, dos personas de mi equipo. Perfecto, Cintia. Muchísimas gracias y mucha suerte el sábado. Gracias a usted. And we will take the next question from Damon Martin with MMA Fighting. Hey, Cynthia. Uh, obviously, this is a, a big opportunity in your first flyweight fight. You were going to fight Antonina Shevchenko, and now you're getting Jessica I in a main event. Uh, what was your reaction when you not only got the name, but also found out you're going to be in a main event in your, in your flyweight debut? Honestly, I was really excited. I was a bit surprised. Um, you know, it's one of those things where if you you know, if you don't ask, you're not going to get it. So um, I was wanting to get a fight lined up, hopefully more so not in such a short notice, but in July, because the gym had just gone up and up again through this pandemic. Um, and I was noticing that everybody was getting matched up, you know, um, in the flyweight division. And I was like, man, you know, especially at my fight had got canceled originally with Antonina. I was like, who's available? And there was only like two people available and one of them happened to be Jessica I. So um, I shot my manager a message and I said, hey, uh, does Jessica have anything lined up? Um, she doesn't, I would love to fight her in July. And he's like, well, let me check. And then they came back with, well, how about main event in three weeks? I'm like, holy crap. I was like, okay, yes. <laughs> so it's just one of those opportunities you just do not say no to. So um, I'm really excited. I was surprised with the main event slot, but, um, and even so I know that it's like kind of a bit of a risk for Jessica Ida, um, you know, take a fight with somebody who's at a lower rank. What does it say though? I mean, not that the odds are, are going to tell you how the fight's going to play out, but the odds are very even going into this fight. I think it's literally a pick 'em. I mean, what does that say about you and your skill set that you bring into this, that you're facing the number one ranked flyweight on your debut, and most people believe this is a toss-up? Yeah, I mean, I think it's great. I think um, people can see what both of our strengths are. You know, she's very strong and fire and aggressive. I am as well. So um, I can see how people can think it's like, you know, can go either way. And especially me coming up and, you know, some people, you know, respecting my skill, but also trying to maybe assume that I might be a little bit too small for the division. But I think this is this is a perfect weight division for me. You've never ignored the weight cutting issues that you had at strawweight obviously you had a lot of success at strawweight but you did have those weight cutting issues now you are at flyweight kind of a two-part question how much better do you feel that you're not you know going through a weight cut right now or at least as severe as a weight cut and do you feel like flyweight will be your permanent home uh, at least for the uh, for the foreseeable future um well i feel great i mean i'm able to like eat like and actually supplement my body correctly while i'm pushing hard through these training sessions you know and um, I felt like when I would fight at Strawy, I would be trying to force myself to walk around a lot lighter. Um, and it was very difficult for me because towards like maybe the two, three weeks going like leave it left in the camp. Like I feel weak. My confidence kind of goes low because I feel like normally the my training partners that don't push me around can push me around. And it doesn't feel that way at Flyway. At Flyway, I can push hard all the way to the end of fight camp. So, um, you know, it's it's. I'm definitely planning to stay here for a very long time. I will, of course, so go back for the right fight. I will definitely drop down to Strawway if I, you know, if the right fight presents itself. But for now, Flyway is my new home. And last question for me. I know you've had a bit of switch in training. You previously had worked with uh, Justin Buckholz and worked a little bit with Team Alpha Male. Worked in Sacramento. And correct me if I'm wrong, but you were working at AKA, right, for this camp. Correct. Um, I went back home to my hometown, San Jose, California. I was born and raised, and 
you know, I get to spend time with my family and I get to train at one of the best gyms in the world. So um, it was a no brainer to go back there and, and train there, especially, you know, during these difficult times. So how much did it mean working? I mean, that gym is, is phenomenal when you think about, you know, obviously Javier Mendez, Daniel Cormier is a coach there, uh, you know, tons of great fighters. I mean, how much did that add for you going into what we have to imagine is the biggest fight of your career against, you know, the number one ranked flyweight? Yeah, I mean, it was great, but it's also a little bit different um, because the gym is closed. So I don't really get to see a lot of the people there. Um, unfortunately, right now, um, it's, you know, it's not like Florida. I know a lot of the teams over there are just running like normal or some of the gyms. And in San Jose, it's been very restrictive. So um, at the beginning, when I was first started going before the pandemic, I was able to, you know, hang around and be around DC and even Khabib was in his training camp and the atmosphere was just, it was amazing. But, uh, this time around, these last couple of weeks have been a little bit more intimate. So I haven't been able to like hang around those guys too much during, uh, this fight camp. Thanks, Cynthia. Yeah, thank you. And we will take our next question from Carlos Contreras with Millennio Diario. Hola, Cynthia, ¿cómo estás? Hola, muy bien, muy bien. ¿Cómo estás, Ted? Pues eh, quería preguntarte qué se siente ser estelar en, en, un, en un evento como este. Obviamente fue una sorpresa, muy poco aviso, pero, pero mucha gente te va a ver y es una oportunidad muy grande de, de demostrar eh, que puedes ser un aspirante a, a pelear por el título en esta nueva división. ¿no? Sí, no, es, es un sueño, de verdad. Um, tuve mi, su, mi última pelea, fue muy dificultad con, con el peso y no la había ganado, fue una, un draw. Y pues no, pues no esperé agarrar una oportunidad así, especialmente subiendo de peso, pero ya que estoy aquí, estoy bien feliz, uh, bien emocionada y no puedo esperar para este sábado. Eh, aunque son strikers muy diferentes, eh, tanto Antonina como, como Jessica, ahí basan mucho su. Su, su pelea en, 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 el, en, la, en el combate de pie. Obviamente tienes mucha ventaja en la lucha, pero ¿estás dispuesta también, si es necesario, a intercambiar con, con Jessica arriba? Sí, claro que sí. Um, lo que me gusta de esta pelea, yo, ella no va a estar tan más alta que, que yo. Creo que con Antonina es una peleadora que eh, pelea Southpaw y es bien alta. Um, entonces el nivel de, de estilo de... Del, de pie era muy diferente. Um, yo creo que con, con Jessica voy a poder um, entrener, entretener la pelea en el pie, pero obviamente lo voy a querer bajar al suelo para terminarlo más pronto. Llegaste a estar muy arriba en, 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 la, en, la, en tu división anterior en el ranking, e incluso eh, pensábamos que tal vez era una pelea de, de pelear por el título. Y, y, y esta oportunidad no pudo ser mejor, ¿no? Porque vas a pelear contra la número uno del ranking. Y una victoria, pues te daría la oportunidad de, de pedir a Valentina, pedir una oportunidad al título acá en, un, en tu primera pelea de la división. Sí, no, es, pues sí, como le digo, estoy sorprendida, pero estoy um, muy, muy feliz de que pude cambiar de división y subir y más o menos seguir de donde dejé en otra división, exactamente como los rankings. Um, me había quedado ahí como los 10, uh, el ranking número 10. Subí a un tiempo el número 6, entonces. Regresar ahí más o menos es donde, pues, es donde quiero estar y yo creo que merezco estar ahí. Entonces, con esta pelea voy a llegar aquí en esta división. Finalmente, Cintia, eh, quiero preguntarte cómo te ha recibido eh, American eh, Kickboxing Academy, a.k.a. Eh, con Javier Méndez y todos los mexicanos que están por allá, que, que seguramente ya pudiste platicar con algunos. Sí, no, uh, pues... Pues allí es donde son mis raíces que nací allí en San José, California. Hay muchos mexicanos, americanos y, y pues todos los conocemos. Entonces cuando sabían que iba a regresar, todos estaban felices apoyándome. Y pues todo está sirviendo muy bien. Uh, creo que, que hice el, el choice correcto. Gracias, Cintia. Buena pelea. Gracias. And we will take our next question from Ron Crook with the final round. Hey, Cynthia, thank you so much for the time. Pat Militich and I called your one and only fight in the LFA, Cynthia. I'd quickly like to talk about your time in that organization. Uh, you get the one win in the LFA, and the UFC comes calling quickly and signs you. Could you talk about how that fight in the LFA helped prepare you for the UFC? Yeah, I mean, absolutely. I, um, you know, 
LFA, I think that was their first show when they were combined. They're originally RFA and Legacy. Um, so we always knew that that was like a stage for like, you know, a UFC feeder. Some of the best of the best fought there before getting into the UFC. So I knew that if I made a sh good showcasing for that one, that I would be under the UFC's radar. And you certainly were. It was only your third professional bout. You earned the TKO win over Montana De La Rosa. And as I said, signed immediately after by the UFC. What do you remember about that fight against De La Rosa? Um, I was really excited. I think I was just overall, I'm a very confident person because of, you know, the train, the team and the training partners uh, that I have or had at the time too, they're all high level. And so, um, I went in there with, you know, just, I don't know, it was great. It was great to be able to fight someone, you know, with a good wrestling base. I knew she was an amazing fighter as well. She was going to be tough. Um, and I just, honestly, I'm, I'm just really happy. It's really a dream. Anytime I get to experience or be a part of something like this, I, I never would have imagined in my life that I would ever reach this level. So um, for me, I was just, I was excited and that I was able to showcase, like, it's still like, I still can't believe it that I, you know, I get paid to like beat people up. <laughs> so. it's, it's been a cool and, and fun journey to watch. One quick question about the main event as we look at this fight. Where do you feel you have the biggest advantage in this bout with Jessica? Um, I think for sure, I mean, my biggest advantage against anybody would be my ground game. But I think overall, you know, because I'm not going to have such a harsh weight cut, especially it being short notice, um, I'm going to, you know, have the endurance. I'm going to have the speed. I feel like I'm going to be more athletic. So, um, you know, I'm going to be able to keep up the same pace. Fantastic. Thank you, Cynthia. Thank you. And we will take the next question from Alfredo Bush with Clara Sports. Hola, hola, ¿me escuchas? Sí, sí, la escucho bien. Perfecto, qué bueno. Oye, eh, para preguntarte eh, acerca de qué tan acostumbrada estás a la división. Es decir, eh, eh, una cosa es que cambies, que vayas hacia arriba, pero qué tan acostumbrada estás a poder pelear el 125. No, pues yo comencé en mis días de amateur, peleé unas pelas a 135 y luego las demás fueron a 125. Ya después cuando hice mi primer pelea de debut de profesional, peleé una a 125 y luego bajé a 120 porque a ese tiempo no había la división de 125 en el UFC. Entonces dije, pues voy a tener que hacer así más, obviamente más estricto con la dieta y pues me sentía un poquito más débil, pero dije voy a hacerlo porque es la única división y mi goal, mi último, último goal es llegar al UFC. Entonces... La segunda pelea fue a 120, la tercera a 115 y luego entré al UFC. Entonces, uh, ya después de you know, muchos tiempos y uh -huh. ya que me ha sido difícil tratar de seguir peleando ahí, creo que es tiempo para regresar donde yo debo de, yo creo que merezco, yo, yo tengo, que, tengo de, que pelear a 125 porque el 115 era muy difícil para mí para cortar ese peso. Y justamente el que te sientas mejor ahí, que, que tengas más fortaleza en ese aspecto, incluso mentalmente, ¿qué tanto te da una ventaja sobre, sobre Jessica en este caso para la pelea de este fin de semana? Sí, pues es una ventaja grande porque cuando unos cortan mucho peso, tienen miedo que a lo mejor se van a cansar o le va a afectar en la pelea. Y pues es algo que yo no me voy a tener que preocupar, preocupar. voy a poder pelear y you no know, cinco rounds porque igual como si fuera otro día de entrenamiento, no voy a estar sufriendo, esta semana ha comido muy bien, entonces me, me siento mucho más mejor y creo que esto es lo que me va a ayudar más a mí. La, la última de mi parte, el, el cambiar, el que te llegue todo de repente, ¿no? En, en medio de la pandemia, pero que tengas un main event y que además sea una pelea que no sea de tres, sino de cinco rounds, eh, ¿cómo te hace sentir que además el UFC haya pensado en ti para decir, bueno, no importa, vamos a ponerla en, 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 en esta contienda? No es una oportunidad que no puedes, que tienes que tomar. Uh, no la puedes negar. Es, uh, yo, que, yo al principio quería pelear en julio porque especialmente durante el pandemic habían cerrado los gimnasios, pero ya que los abrieron y pues yo estuve entrenando afuera del gimnasio para estar lista en caso de cuando en, eh, abrieran, pero 
Um, no, la verdad, yo, yo estoy bien emocionada y feliz. Yo creo que eh, sí es algo que vamos a, a tomar, que es algo de, de cinco, que es cinco rounds en vez de tres rounds, pero ella está en el mismo, en el mismo lugar que yo. No es como si estoy yendo contra alguien que no está yendo por un pandemia que no le ha afectado a ella, porque yo sé que también hay en, también en el ¿Qué ¿Qué ella no sabía y no, no tuvo mucho tiempo para entrenar. Entonces, todos estamos como pues, en el mismo lugar tratando de hacer lo mejor en, 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 you know, en este tiempo. Perfecto. Muchas gracias. Que te vaya muy bien. Sí, gracias a usted. And we will take our next question from Gabriel Gonzalez with Cape Side Press. Hi, Cynthia. Quick question. Training out of AK. Do you know if Daniel Cormier is commentating this week? Um, I'm not sure. I don't think he is, but um, I'm not sure. <laughs> I asked because with no fans, you know, people have talked about, oh, they can hear Cormier, he's the cheat code and everything else. Oh, yeah. I would ask you, would you... had an extra corner there. <laughs> I was going to say, if he was, or do you feel like you would take advantage of that to kind of listen out for him if that were the case? But I'm going to be listening to everybody. I'm going to listen to commentators. I'm going to listen to her team. So I know what the heck is coming, you know, but obviously, um, and it's funny because I've actually, uh, that's actually that's something that I've done in other previous fights. I mean, it's, I've never fought when there was no crowd, but obviously at a smaller venue and I can hear their corners. So I remember just almost listening to their corner, knowing what's going to come before, you know, listening to my corner. So, um, uh, I'm excited. I'm excited to see what that's going to be like. You know, I think it's going to be a game changer for sure. Can you talk about your personal experience this week? Obviously, you know, you go through all the things, the testing, they have you isolated. Can you just talk about how that's been for you personally and just the mood? I mean, it's been honestly very different from other fight weeks, that's for sure. Um, especially here in Vegas, I don't think I've ever seen Vegas, you know, so down. It's always so vibrant, people everywhere going crazy. So um, it's definitely been more chilled out, more security. So we're taking extra precautions. Um, the UFC has been doing a great job to make sure that we're taking care of them, that we're safe. And, you know, we don't got people coming in and out. And, um, you know, it's, it's been going great so far. You know, we're dealing with it the best way we can. I'm, I'm so happy that you know, that we're able to come back, you know, especially during this time. I know a lot of people can't work. So I'm extremely happy that the UFC has been able to make this happen. You've talked about your experience against uh, now current UFC flyweights in the past. And I want to ask you about one of them because Joanne Calderwood, who's going to be fighting for the title. I mean, this is now your division. Uh, how do you see that fight going with Jojo and Valentina? I mean, I think I think it's gonna be a lot closer than what most people think. Um, I feel like uh, Joanne Calderwood has made a lot of improvements since um, moving here to Vegas, and um, I think it's gonna be definitely a more difficult fight for for Valentina. But right now, I really don't see anybody giving her, you know, a tough time right now as far as the top five. As an athlete, um, this is a big fight, obviously, former title challenger, main event on ESPN. You know, you win this one, it's very easy to be like, hey, who? it's not a deep pool for Valentina, right? How do you, you know, as the athlete, stay focused, make sure you're treating Jessica I with the respect she needs, and not get too ahead of yourself when you know the situation in flyweight? Yeah, I never look ahead, I mean, of, ahead of what my, you know, opponent for me, whoever I'm fighting, they're going to be, you know, the toughest opponent that I have to date. Um, I don't look past that at all. Um, I understand that she's the number one ranked fighter and where this could take me. But, um, you know, I'm, I'm a fighter. This is what I'm here for. But I never look past my opponents. Right now, the only thing I'm worried about is Jessica I. Perfect scenario. Get a big victory on Saturday night. Some parts of Vegas are opening up. Some have not. Have you thought about how you would celebrate if you can having um sorry what have you thought about how you would celebrate if you can oh how i would celebrate if i oh i just i don't know i'll still i'll still probably like eat pizza or something so hopefully i can still find pizza after my fight that's always like my main thing pizza and gummy bears <laughs> do, what are the <laughs> toppings for your pizza what's the yeah. fight pizza look like i'm sorry oh i just i like i man hmm I can do like pepperoni with uh, pineapple and jalapenos. 
Okay, sounds good. That's pretty good. <laughs> Perfect. Thank you. Thank you, Cynthia. That is all the questions we had for you. You are good to go. Awesome. Thank you, guys. Thank you. Bye.